In today's episode of the Motorhome Matt podcast, we discuss the recent changes to Calagas cylinder offerings, including a U turn on their discontinuation of the smaller bottles. In the news, we discuss whether the Red Sea issues have an impact on component and product deliveries. And we answer your questions on price protection and the use of wood in new motorhomes. Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Industry insights and expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and campervans brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. And remember to follow on your podcast app and subscribe on YouTube. Click the little bell sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. Straight into the news then, Matt. Uh, The NEC Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show 2024. 13th to the 18th of February the Muck Show as we like to call it The Muck Show indeed, it's not a farming show it's going to be a big one, it's the annual February show back at the NEC in Birmingham and I'm on the Ask the Expert panel uh, on stand 3120 on Wednesday and Thursday, so there each day Wednesday and Thursday there is a panel 11.15 and 2.45 I'll be on that panel and then throughout the week I'm on the stand, the uh, Expert Advice stand Uh, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So basically I'm on there all week. Fantastic. And by the way, it, did you notice the date? He's there on Valentine's Day, girls. Well, and boys. <laughs> My Valentine card will be going in the suitcase. I guarantee she forgets. <laughs> OK, then you're on stand uh, 1062. Yes. The, that Leisure Shop and Maypole. Yeah, so the team from That Leisure Shop are running the Maypole stand. So if you need security or motorhome or caravan cover, uh, any of that great stuff that Maypole sell, then head into Hall 1, stand 1062 and look for the Maypole at that leisure shop stand. And John and Tash are there running that for us from Life Beyond Bricks. Will you have any of these? The stickers. On it. Well, you could be a sticker knicker if you're at the show. Just come along, pick them up. A sticker knicker. They are free. You ain't got to nick them. I'm listening to the Motorhome Map podcast. There we are. Stick that on the back of the van. Uh, or on your habitation door. Seems to be a popular location. Uh, or on a toilet cassette, as I've known a few people do. Um, so, yeah, come and grab I'll have these on the advice centre. So, come and grab a I'm listening to Motorhome Map sticker. There's also Stand 4180, That Leisure Shop, and Crespo and Bow Camp as well. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, again, the team from That Leisure Shop are running the Crespo Bow Camp stand. I don't know if you've seen their products. They are beautiful. Beautiful, um, an amazing array of chairs, tables, and accessories uh, from the Netherlands and from Valencia in Spain. In Hall 4, stand 4180, uh, some of the team from the shop will be there helping you browse through an amazing array of uh, outdoor accessory products. And we've got stock. Stock has, is arriving every day here, so you can choose your product at the show and we will dispatch it the same day or next day for delivery within a few days. And if you are going to the show, you can save a little bit of money by getting your tickets at ccmshow.co.uk. I'll repeat that, ccmshow.co.uk yep. and use the code Matt, M-A-T-T, to save some pennies. Absolutely. Yep. Say, why not? Use the code Matt, save a few pence. And don't forget, whatever stand you go to, be a sticker, Nicker. You see? <laughs> and, and claim, and, and say, you know, I am a motorhome Matt listener. I claim my free kiss on Valentine's Day. No, right? don't do that. Honestly, yeah. not with this, not with this <laughs> hundred day cough I've still got. Honestly. <laughs> Okay, then let's uh, get more serious, shall we? Uh, The Middle East crisis seems to be escalating over recent weeks with Houthi rebels uh, firing uh, on ships, which they say are linked to Israel, uh, but they don't seem all to be. Um, The uh, Royal Navy and the US Navy have been involved, as indeed have uh, the uh, RAF as well as the uh, US Air Force in uh, bombing what they say are... uh, ammunition dumps basically the houthis are launching drones and missiles at ships going through the red sea it's a narrow strait a huge amount of world trade goes through it is it having an impact on vehicles components and product deliveries Matt? it is yeah so what's happening of course these ships are now not going through that strait and through the red sea they're going all around south of africa uh, which is adding two, three weeks onto their journey time. Yeah, that, around the Cape of Good Hope, which is one of the stormiest seas in the world. And adding, oh, I heard a ridiculous number about the amount of fuel, millions and millions and millions of pounds or dollars mm. 
to the fuel cost for these huge super tankers to get into Europe going that route. So it's definitely had an impact on uh, stuff coming from the Middle East and from the Far East. So particularly accessories, so chairs, tables and so on. So we're seeing some delays already for, for stock that's coming from there. I did ask Ford, I asked our friend Ryan at Ford, he's in charge of leisure vehicles for Ford, what impact this is having for them. Obviously lots of componentry I imagine comes from the Far East and the Ford Transit's built in Turkey, he said no impact at all. So we're not expecting uh, any delays to Ford chassis. So if you've ordered a motorhome and it's on a Ford chassis and you're worrying about is there going to be another delay, then apparently, according to Ford, no. Um, haven't had any response from Stellantis Group. We never do. Uh, so what impact is having on Fiat, Citroën, Peugeot? I've no idea. Um, I did ask, but no response. So there is some impact, um, several weeks. So I think we might see shops stocking up, possibly on some products slower than on others. So get onto that leisureshop.com and uh, make sure uh, you buy well in advance uh, uh, for this year's uh, season, motorhoming and caravanning and camping season. Because I mean, the thing is, Matt, uh, whenever we do have uh, a hiccup in supply, it's the consumer that pays in the end. That's right, yeah. And the other big impact this is having is the cost. So I was talking to one of the brands that we're looking at selling in the shop and they said that a container used to cost £740 to bring to the UK. During COVID, it jumped up to nearly £20,000. Oh. And they're seeing it drop back down to around £6,000. And currently, it's up around £13,000. So how on earth do you manage this and spread that cost across all this product that you sold months ago? Um, so they're having to just kind of put a finger in the air. Some of it they'll suck up and just absorb and others will be passed on. So it's a very turbulent kind of time at the moment uh, where prices in the short term are going up. And I guess they'll hope for some stability to recoup that through the year. You were talking about being at the show with some of uh, our partners. Uh, will it affect prices of the things that you're selling at the show? Uh, well, that product is already here. So uh, we're fortunate in the product we're buying is coming from Europe. Um, so it's, if it came from you know, the, the, the Far East or Middle East, um, then it's already arrived. So it's already here in our warehouse. So, you know, the price there is fixed and, and, and you know, the manufacturers have been kind of honouring that and, and not putting the price up. See you at the show then. OK, then the, the That Leisure Shop product of the week oh, yeah. this week. What is it, Matt? I love this. So this is new into stock. This is from Maypole. We will have these at the show. This is a little air compressor that will blow up a car tire um inflate a car tire inflate a car tire <laughs> we'll blow it up 100 <laughs> bang <laughs> to a much higher pressure than you need i can't remember the actual number 150 psi i think it's it's significant yeah. and it will jump start your car and i've done both with it and it's brilliant uh, so we jump started a very very flat car and it took about 20 percent of the battery to do it and we re-inflated a a car tire on a range rover from flat and it took a third of the battery. So it recharges in a very short space of time. What's great about it is USB rechargeable and it comes with a three pin plug as well, so you can plug it in at home. Um, and it has a torch. So it's, yeah, it does everything. And under 100 pounds. 99.99. Yeah, and don't forget, you use the code in the shop as well, Motorhome Matt, and uh, you get some, you get 10% off. So it's actually 90 quid. That's not bad, is it? Well done. Really good, fits in the boot. Must have, I'd say. They're really handy to have. They really are, not just when you want to jumpstart your car. I've got an, uh, an older version of, uh, of one of them at home, and I use it to power a telescope. <laughs> a telescope? <Yeah. laughs> Why does your telescope need power? It needs 12 volts. Well, these days, telescopes, you don't just point them. Um, you press a couple of buttons, and they find stars and planets for you. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like lazy telescoping? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Yeah, these are great. 800 amps. Telescopes, your power pack, and a cup of soup. 120 psi. I mean, that's way more than any motone. It but is yeah. very handy to have. You know, you get to the motone, it's been stored all winter. Click, 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 won't start. Anyway, yeah. brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Brought to you with that leisureshop.com. Today, 
We're talking about Calagas and yet more changes that they've announced. Is this good or bad for the consumer, Matt? Well, it potentially good. Uh, frustrating is probably how it feels. So Cala last year announced that they were uh, withdrawing a number of bottles from their portfolio. So the six kilogram light, that's been talked about being withdrawn for a decade, a long time. It's finally been withdrawn. The bottles have expired and they're no longer recycling them. They also announced they were withdrawing key for us little motomer bottles are the 3.9 kilo propane and the 4.5 kilo butane. So these are the small ones, which if you're in marine or you're a VW camper van, they're the ideal size. And they were going to withdraw them based on cost. And simply because they were saying it costs the same to refill one of those as it does a huge oxygen bottle in a hospital. So they just weren't viable. Well, it created a massive uh, response from their consumers, their customers saying, this is not on, what am I meant to do? The option was to go to an alternative uh, supplier. Lots of people went to flow gas. Uh, when the flow bus flow gas bottle is actually slightly taller so it doesn't fit in all the cupboards or to camping gas which is much more expensive uh, and so lots of unhappy people and then Cal have announced they're reintroducing them they announced this at the beginning of the year uh, and they are bringing both those small bottles back into circulation and they still haven't so they said they were going to and now they're saying it's going to be sometime late spring when they reappear so pretty frustrating Late spring is frustrating because the season gets underway before that, doesn't it? So people want it to does. know where they are and have their stocks and all the rest of it. Yeah, most annoying is if you thought, oh, well, I can't use these bottles anymore. So this empty one I've got, I'm just going to you know, recycle it, take it to the tip. Well, that bottle now has a value. So to get back into the kind of on the ladder, you've now got to pay another deposit to buy another one. It's really annoying. Mm -hmm. And you can't exchange the camping gas one for one of these because so, they're a different make. Um, so, yeah, it's been very annoying. So that's the first kind of source of frustration from Cala. Uh, but what's interesting is what their plans are for the future. So I've stated before that I think we will see gasless motorhomes. We'd all go electric, electric drivetrain, uh, solar panels on the roof, big lithium ion batteries in the leisure side. And so we'd all have induction hobs, electric microwaves. And Cala, I've been talking to them about this and saying, well, how are you future proofing your business? And their plan is to go for a completely renewable gas so they will keep the bottles in circulation and start replacing the gas with a non-fossil fuel gas because burning stuff is we got to stop doing it and ultimately to get to zero emissions we have to stop burning stuff uh, and Cala are going to be doing this with a renewable gas uh, it's called DME oh that's catchy it's a catchy name, isn't it? I can tell you what it stands for as well. I've got one. I, 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 here on my piece of paper that I use uh, because I've got a bad memory, it says small R DME. R DME, is So that right? renewable, yeah. So ah, I've got a small R's. It's dimethyl ether. <laughs> dimethyl? Yeah. Dimethyl? I'm not sure how you pronounce Dim it. Dimethyl ether. It's probably why it's called DME. So it's renewable DME. So oh. this is a phrase we're going to start seeing. Now, little tip for Cala here. You need something a bit more catchy. A bit punchy, yes. Yeah, you just, you know... Flamey, something like that. Flamey. <laughs> no, but you can't use flamey, can you? Well, it, well you can still burn it, yeah. but it has absolutely zero soot, zero CO. It is a completely net emission zero product. Uh, and what's fascinating about it is how it's made. Um, so we've got some facts here, haven't we? Um, fascinating facts time. <laughs> it's fascinating facts time. <laughs> So this is a synthetic gas. So there's something called bio-LPG, which is different, and you're going to start seeing that term. That's been around for a little while. But what's interesting about DME is it can be used as an alternative to diesel fuel. Mm. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, so you can run your car on it. You could run your car on it. And they had to adapt the vehicle. How much adaption? New tank, new fuel pump, new fuel pipes. Yeah. About you, five grand's worth. Probably, mm. yeah, probably. But what I find fascinating is this is still a relatively new product, and we feel like we're being very much railroaded down the kind of EV route. So a battery powered power plant for our cars and vans. What I think this journey to zero emissions is gonna create is new products and new conversations. And this is gonna be one of them. You know, I've not seen anybody talking about this in our industry, uh, our DME, renewable DME. I think we're gonna see more and more people start to talk about it. And potentially we could see vans running on it. It's interesting that Volvo, and Total, the fuel company, own this stuff. There's a few other fuel companies in the mix as well. But they own this stuff. 
And there's a new plant being built in Teesside uh, where they're going to start producing it and Calor are investing into it. And how's it made? What's it made from? So what's interesting is it's made from animal waste, poo. sewage poo, mm-hmm. sewage sludge, renewable power and CO2, uh, forest residues, municipal waste, agricultural residues and energy crops. Right, I'm with you. So, so sort of a mix of, a mix of all. So you grow some crops yeah, and you've got a bit of poo and you've got some sewage and all the rest of it. So, yeah. so, so it's methane. It's methane, I was going to say. It's yeah. me- methane based. You could offer your services. <laughs> Christmas is over, thankfully. They'd welcome you with open arms, more sprites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, unlike natural gas so lpg which we use now yeah when vented it releases methane which is harmful and global warming pollutant dme does not exhibit the same problem dme is a cleaner fuel biodegradable non-corrosive and emits minimal to zero soot so it seems like it's a perfect product but lpg didn't catch on did it even though it was cheaper because it was a real pain you couldn't get it in enough petrol stations you you know it was a another career trying to figure out where you're going to fill up this could go down that same route unless they get that right it could do i guess it's going to be about commercial take-up so what's interesting is is the types of brands that own this product and will undoubtedly want to push it onto the consumer Uh, and i think it's fascinating we could see vans running Mm. on this stuff um and that whole world it it's i don't know it's complicated um but i think it's one to look at and as i say i think the journey to to zero emission to net zero as it's called is going to create uh an interesting range of topics and we i've got here the timeline we're on i'm going to bore you with this because i find this fascinating this is a long list by the way no it's not 2022 (laughs) the first pilot plant producing renewable dme open so that's happened uh, and Liquid Gas UK members increased investment to over 200 million. So these are the companies behind this. In 2024, the UK's first commercial RDME plant opens in Teesside, producing 50,000 tonnes of it per year. That is already on track. So I think that's open, and it has happened. So we're on, on the timeline. Um, and there's a Philips 66 Humber refinery expands to producing 5,000 barrels a day of biodiesel and bio LPG. So this is a, a similar product. Uh, in 2030, the Paris Agreement target to reduce carbon emissions by 68% compared to 1990 levels. I don't know where we are now compared to 1990. But by 2040, the LPG industry aims to deliver 100% renewable solutions. And Cala are on that journey. So that's only 16 years away. That's not very long. And that's a big change in terms of our Cala bottles, which means Cala have a future. But it's not just the bottles, is it? The interesting thing, the point you made early on, uh, is uh, it's uh, suitable for diesel engines. And, of course, uh, one of uh, the uh, classes of vehicles for which uh, you know, electric power isn't really practical is lorries. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what's interesting is lorries are starting to go electric. So we're seeing cars now. Uh, and cars are viable yeah, with all the complications around residuals and so on. The next to come, I think, is articulated lorries, and there we're seeing more and more of those. And then will come the van, and then will come the motorhome once the van has been sussed. If the van has an alternative to electric, which is more viable and cheaper, uh, then we could be looking at gas-powered vehicles. So it's a fascinating topic and a change I'm going to see in my lifetime, possibly yours, Keith. Um, <laughs> no, we will. So I just think it's a brilliant time to be alive because we're going to see some of the biggest changes we've ever seen uh, in modern times uh, and you know, changes to how we drive and, and our behaviour. What's also interesting is the, is the LPG pumps are disappearing. Um, so MFG Fuel Group have, have, have taken them away in place of EV charger points. Mm. Will they start reintroducing them if this becomes viable? Yeah. Maybe. Mm. So it's a more change uh, and I think a conversation worth having. So there you are. You heard it here first. RDME. Or R-D-M-E. Flamey. R-D-M-E. Flamey. <laughs> flamey. We'll go with Flamey. We'll pitch it to uh, the brand team at Callas. Yeah. they say. <laughs> so what changes do I need to make as a consumer? You've already said if I've got a diesel vehicle, it's likely that if I wanted to, uh, I c- uh, could make some changes to the fuel delivery system. But if Callas are using it, what about my barbecue? What about in my motorhome? Yeah, is it going to be like, remember when we went to unleaded? You know, you needed to make uh, adjustments to the engine in order for it to burn properly. Yeah. Am I going to have to do any all that stuff? Nothing. 
Nothing at all. That's the best bit about it. I've got to change the regulator. It can be transported as liquid uh, and used as a as a gas, uh, and you don't have to change anything. It burns. I think it burns slightly colder than diesel. Uh, so it needs slightly more pressure, so it's, it, it needs more of it than diesel. But in terms of your barbecue, so a direct replacement, this is it. So in our motorhome and caravan, it's just a gas bottle. It just hasn't got fossil fuel in it. It's the RDME. How much is it going to cost me then? Well, there's the question. That, I don't know. I Probably it's going to go up, and everything's going up. But that but, too early to say. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't apply to colour, does it? But I mean, when I'm putting fuel in my vehicle, I'm paying a lot of duty and VAT on the duty. Uh, you, 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 this, from what you've said, won't have any duty on it. Well, potentially it shouldn't. I mean, gas carries at the moment a 5% VAT mm. um, versus you know, much higher on fuel. Uh, but <laughs> governments want to step in and well, capitalise well, on it. Well, you've got to pay for the roads and the hospitals and the street lighting yeah. somehow, haven't you? So uh, undoubtedly there will be a taxation on it. It's still early days and we would love to get someone from Cala or from SHV Energy who own Cala to come on. We have invited them. We haven't heard back from anybody yet. And it's probably because it's so early in the conversation they're nervous about you know, going public. Yeah, making promises that they can't keep. Yeah, but we will certainly be watching this. I think it's a big topic and one we're going to keep an eye on. It'd be Uh, great, wouldn't it, to have a tour of the uh, factory where they make it? Trip to Teesside? Yeah. It'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Be interesting stuff. Okay, well, thanks very much for that, Matt. You're very welcome. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. It's all brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. It's the Q&A, the questions and answers. He's the expert. You <laughs> ask the questions. I'm sort of in the middle, stopping a fight breaking out. Like a pig. Uh, yeah. Lynn Blackwell's in Bath. Help, she says. We have £140,000 sat in the bank. Hey, Lynn. Lucky lady. I live near Bath. We put a deposit on a Heimer 570 MLT crossover in August last year with price protection due for the latest model. We have now been told by the dealer that it is not price protected, nor is there a date confirmation of details. I understand Heimer have released little, but we're feeling robbed of a timeline. Mm. The vehicle, everything else around it. Please help us, Matt. We're so upset. And be honest with you i think lynn's got a choice it is this is about treating the end user your customer properly and it seems from what she's saying that that's not happening no and of course (laughs) there's a supply chain here which is passing the increased costs up and it gets to a point where it ends up with you the consumer i suppose um i've not looked into the detail of this with this particular model lovely motone choice by the way we saw them in dusseldorf they're great uh the mrt is great uh i share your frustration lynn uh there really is not a lot you can do about it apart from march with your money i suppose and buy something else but the mrt of course is so unique there isn't really anything else out there like it and i can imagine uh, you haven't said which dealer and rightly so you bought it from uh, but the only thing i could suggest is whether it's worth going to another dealer and see if they have supply coming through at a lower cost and see what they can do for you but i'd be very surprised if they can but yeah i i hear what you're saying you feel robbed of a timeline so many people are in the same boat as you lynn uh it's been a really really difficult four years for that reason really frustrating you know people like you been waiting a year or even longer two years um do you know i I was speaking to a a range rover dealer and he said if you ordered a brand new range rover right now because i asked him about his supply chain three years to get one it's ridiculous but that's not because interestingly there's a lack of parts range rover actually capping the supply so to keep their residual prices high they're capping the supply which is not what's happening here i'm not doing that Mm. of course the mlt is a niche product uh, and they don't sell loads of them, but you know you're spending six figures, 150, 200k. Uh, so th- the supply of them is limited, um, and not because Heimer are trying to cap the cap the supply to keep the residuals high, which is what Range Rover are doing. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we've seen in the news, Porsche flooded the market with cars, and the used values have all plummeted. Yeah, but the thing is here, it's not about the, the, you know the, the difficulties that dealers are having. We have a customer here who went into a contract you know, whether it was signed or whether it was a shake of a hand with price protection and the yeah. dealer is not standing behind that you know and my advice to you lynn is 
Take your money and go somewhere else where you can trust the people you're buying it from. I know people, you know, dealers and manufacturers have had a hard time, but you don't pass the hard time on to people who are spending £140,000. You just don't do it. No, that's true. And what's the point of price protection if it's not going to be price protected? It's closing the deal at the time, isn't it? And yeah. then you don't stand behind it. It's and wrong. that's where Lynn's frustrations come from, is the amount of time that's passed. And to get it, they've got to spend more money. Um, it's yeah, very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Lynn, as Keith suggests, you could, as I say, uh, as well, talk to another dealer and see what they can offer you. But, of course, the problem is, get this product, Keith, there aren't that many dealers that sell it. No, there aren't, many, there aren't that many that have got the credit line or are brave enough to actually buy this product with a view to selling it because they're probably only sell six or seven a year, mm. and it's a big chunk of change. So you know, it's a huge product on their credit line. So there are literally a handful that Lynn can choose from here. So it is very, very difficult, Lynn, um, and I feel your pain, but I don't have a silver bullet for you. I'm sorry. Barry Murphy's in Dublin. Hi, Matt. I recently upgraded my 2010 Sunlight motorhome to a newer model from 2020. One thing that surprised me was that the chassis floor was still constructed using wood. With modern construction techniques, I assumed all motorhomes were reducing the use of wood in their construction. Are there many manufacturers still using wood, such as Sunlight, in their chassis construction? Are there any steps I should take to maintain the wood floor? And what sort of lifespan could one expect from wooden flooring uh, regards says barry well the thing that springs to my mind matt is of course water ingress that that is the enemy of wood in motorhomes it, it is yeah and, and often it's not a marine ply that's used it's just regular timber um so the key the key here barry is a lot of manufacturers have been stopping using wood in the construction of the walls and the roofs but for some reason the floors often still contain wood Shoson are still doing it as well uh, and we have this product on our hire fleet and there's often by the kitchen there's a a strip that goes across and it gets damp um, from underneath uh, or from the shower and kitchen area that gets into the floor and it weakens the floor so we've had to repair a few uh, it's quite common um, I think we'll see more and more manufacturers not using wood at all as we go forward uh, but of course wood is historically been a cheap product to use that's not quite the case anymore it's gone up in price so in terms of protecting it under sealing it would be a very very good idea there's lots of products out there um, you'll, you'll see them online where you can spray the underside with sunlight you there is an underspray that death left who owns sunlight issue and they want you to under seal every year as part of the habitation check uh, and this is why to stop water ingress as you say coming up through the floor and ruining the floor because the first thing that goes down in a motor is the floor and everything else goes on top of it if you've got to replace the floor it's the oh you've got to take the top off you got to, oh, yeah and it, it's a nightmare mm. uh, and trying to get through from underneath can be really hard mm. because you've got all that mechanical stuff mm. underneath the floor so it can be a very very involved repair um so under sealing it is a very very good idea um yours is going to be now if it's if it's 2020 is uh still probably got a year of water ingress warranty left um but i'd definitely look at getting it done by the dealer as part of the habitation check or doing it yourself i'm really surprised that you said early on in that answer that they don't use marine ply what is it double the price for a sheet uh, than normal ply when you're looking at the cost of these motorhomes surely that's a uh, uh, a sensible uh, a precaution against water ingress. It's weight as well. That's the big uh, issue. Is it heavier? Much heavier. So, it, you know, payload, number one topic of the year, probably. Uh, it's, it, that's a big consideration. So wood is light. Um, and compared to some man-made products, it's much lighter. So Adria, for example, will use a product that's completely man-made in their walls and roofs and, I believe, in their floors. Uh, and, it, and it's something they've invested a lot of money into, which is lightweight and completely non-absorbent. So, yeah, under seal, that's the answer. Barry in Dublin, thanks very much for your question. If you've got a question, what should people do, Matt? Easy, just go to mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. Hit the little orange button and record your question. Tell us where you are or fill out the form. That's mhmp, motorhome Matt podcast, get it? Dot info forward slash ask Matt. You can subscribe on YouTube and that's sponsored by aerobasecreative.co.uk. And you can share this episode with a friend. We would love that. If you know someone who think you think they would find it interesting uh, or useful, please do share with them. Help us spread the word of the podcast. We'd love that. 